Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Today we are making tunnel books. This is such a fun project for anyone. Why? Because you can create so many different stories and use the books in different ways. For example, look at this. This is just one idea of how you can use tunnel books. Imagine the personalized gifts that you can make. You can do photos of your family, you can do birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, little tunnel books like this, little memory books. Or of course you can do themes, you can do all sorts of stuff which we will discuss in this tutorial. We have the step-by-step -step instructions ready to go, but let's start off with what are tunnel books. So a tunnel book is a handmade bookbinding technique that has a 3D scene within its pages and is created through layered cutouts. Tunnel books are really easy to make, surprisingly so. And these little booklets that I have here are really quite basic tunnel books. But once you know the foundation of making one, you can make them so much more elaborate and fun. And really you can take this in so many different directions. All right, let's get started. Step number one is to select your pages. So I'm just going to select a few from this notepad. This is actually a six by six paper pad and the size doesn't matter. You can use any size you want. I happen to have this six by six one and I'm going to go with this. So now I'm going to arrange them in the order that I want them. Perhaps I'm going to do something like this. This is going to be my first page and then it's going to go that way. It probably would be better to have double sided paper so that as you're flipping through, you have pattern on both sides, even though on some of them, as you can see, I use double sided, some I used single sided. Actually, most of the ones that I've done are all single sided, but I think it'll be nice to have double sided. Also, the number of pages that you choose is totally up to you. I'm only using five pages and I use five pages for most of my projects. You can do however many you want. All right, step number two is to decide on the opening. So you can do a circle opening, which is this one here, and it goes from larger circle to the smaller circle here at the back. You can do square, you can do rectangle, you can do horizontal rectangles like this. You can do ripped opening like this. You can also do asymmetrical shapes. The whole thing can be asymmetrical and the opening also can be asymmetrical. Or you can do something like this. All of the openings are completely different shapes. You can see that one there. And then this one again is a completely different shape. And then this one here. So this is actually the easiest to do because you don't have to worry about having them positioned perfectly. It's totally up to you. So you can see on this one here, all of my openings are exactly the same shape and they go from largest to smallest. Same as this one here and also the circle one. So if you choose to go with something like this, you have to make sure that your circles are you know, sitting perfectly within each other, if that makes sense. Whereas if you do something like this, you don't have to worry about that so much. And especially if you do all different shapes, you don't have to worry about getting the exact same shapes on all of your pages. So for this tutorial today, I'm actually going to go with this one. I really love how this looks. You can do like wiggly openings like this, totally up to you. Each tunnel book you make can be completely different. So now that I've decided on my opening, I'm gonna start cutting, that's our next step. So the first page always has the largest opening and then it just gets smaller and smaller as you've seen in the examples I've shown you. That's what creates that tunnel look because if you have a small opening here and a large one at the back, you'll only be able to see the small opening. Another thing to keep in mind is that we will be hinging the pages in the next step. So when you're cutting your openings, make sure you leave some space here. You don't want to have like a complete opening here and then no space for the hinging. All right, I'm going to start cutting. Some other things you can do is hearts. That would look nice. Going smaller and smaller. You can do butterflies. You can do little house shapes. That would look cool. But for this one and just to speed things up, I'm just going to do you know, really anything. So I'm just going to start off like this. You might even want to draw the shape before you cut it. All right, so here is my first one. I probably could have left a little bit more space here, but that's okay. It will still work. All right, so for the next one, what you want to do is grab your next page that you have selected and pop it underneath. And then you can see exactly where to cut. If you wanted to have the exact same shaped opening, 
you will just follow the lines that you already have. That's how I did this one here. I just place the next sheet right underneath and then I can see exactly where I need to cut. But I'm going to do asymmetrical shapes, so I'm just going to cut whatever. All right, and here is my next one. So you can see how that's looking so far. And now my next page goes underneath. Maybe I can take this top one off because I really just need the one before it. Okay, that's this one. That's how it's looking so far. And we just keep going. And that's the next one. And I always like to just keep checking how it's going with all of my pages. And now I just have one more to do and it's going to be a small opening, really small opening, this one. And here is what I have. I'm going to ink the edges. You'll be able to see this effect a lot more when the edges are inked. So I'll do that next. I'll do it off camera, but I just wanted to show you before I do that, in case if you're wondering how to do the circle shapes, I don't have circle punches. I used these things. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. And I have this as well. This is what I used for my rectangle ones. You can do oval. I mean, you know, whatever tool you have at home, you utilize that. So if you wanted to get circles, you can draw your circles on using one of these, a compass, and find the middle of the page and then just draw your circles from largest to smallest. And if you wanted to do ripped edges like this, which I think look really nice, you can just very easily rip your shapes out this way. The only thing is it's hard now to get the next page exactly the same shape. So don't even worry about that. All of my ripped out shapes are kind of sort of similar kind of uh, oval, but they don't all sit perfectly within each other. As you'll notice here, this one here goes up underneath and you can't really see its full outline. You can see in there. So I love the ripped edges look and I love that there's a freedom with it not being perfect. Inking the edges is admittedly a bit of a tedious process. However, as you can see, it adds depth and adds to that 3D effect of the complete book. So I think inking the edges is important. So now I can decide, do I want it this way? Do I want it this way? Really, any way that I choose is going to look good. All right, the next step is to hinge pages together. So you'll need some paper that's exactly the same height as your book. So I'm just going to choose something from here. I might use this paper for my cover. That's the paper that's going to be visible on the outside. You can see I chose this one that corresponds with this one. It doesn't really matter. And then on the inside, you can use offcuts, really. It can be anything as long as it's the same height. And so the next thing I'm going to do is cut down the strips. The only thing is I didn't really leave uh, much space here at the spine. That's okay. I'm going to cut down my strips to about an inch and a half. So for my five pages, I need four strips for the inside. You can see I've marked increments of an inch and a half, or that's approximately about four centimeters. And then I need an extra one for my cover. So we'll come back to this. We'll do the inside first. All right, my strips are cut down and inked. And now what we want to do is fold it in half lengthwise. You can use a scoring board if you have one. And if not, you just simply fold it in half and get a really crisp edge by running a bone folder across the fold or the handle of your scissors and then that's what we get and here we have it our little hinges this is a really simple binding method you can use fabric you can use washi tape anything you have on hand all right it's probably good that i actually went a bit too close to the edge here so you can see what happens and why you should avoid that now we are only working on page one and two so you open page one and you've got page two. We're going to be hinging it together. So like I said, a bit of washi tape there will also do the job. Just make sure you apply glue onto the washi tape. I need to apply my hinge over here, but of course I don't want it to be visible. That's why you want to leave more space than I did. Because if I do this, you see the hinge is visible, which I don't like. 
I mean, it's not too bad, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down. Okay, I have my first two pages ready to go and my hinge, this shorter one, is going to go on here and it's not going to be showing through. So I'm going to start off with page number one. So what I need to do is apply glue right over here. You can also use double-sided tape. Okay, pop this down and just double check that it's nicely lined up with that outside edge and press it down. That's the first page. All right, now I'm going to apply glue onto this side here. Get right up to the edges. There's my glue. And now you have to make sure that you have your pages correctly kind of lined up because you don't want to be putting it down the wrong way, if that makes sense. All right, and now this one goes on top. Press down, check that everything is lined up. That's looking good. It's actually more important to check these edges that they're lined up and then the spine doesn't matter so much because we will be covering it up anyway. So, okay, next hinge. Apply glue all over, pop it down, press down, perfect. And now get your next page off of your pile. Apply glue onto that hinge. How easy is this? It doesn't really get any easier than this. Especially if you're using double-sided tape, the process will be quicker. I prefer not to use double-sided tape, that's just personal preference. Okay, now this one goes on top. Next hinge. Glue, pop it down, smooth down, excellent. Apply glue on here. And the next page goes on top. That's the spine so far. And now we just have one more to go. The very last page. And here it is, lucky last. On it goes. How easy was that? That's the spine. Let's see how it looks. That's the front. Okay, this one is kind of, oh, oh my goodness. It's kind of sticking up a bit, but you know, that's just such a minor little thing that I can easily fix. Maybe I'll just ink it and it's not going to be visible, but it's not going to be visible anyway, because the next step is spine covering. You probably already have worked out how to do this. You don't even have to do this step. It's just nice to have something there on the spine. But before I do that, I just want to check that nothing is being glued on the inside where it shouldn't be. Because sometimes glue can seep through and glue pages together. We don't want that. So I'm just double checking. That's all good. Perfect. Okay, now again, I have that little minimal space there. So I'm just going to, maybe I'll do exactly the same again. I'm going to do one and a half inches. Okay, here's my one and a half inch strip. So I'm just going to kind of mark, maybe I can do this, keep that in place and then fold over the top. You can do it this way or that's going to work. So I've, you can see I've created a little spine. Otherwise, what you can do is use a scoreboard if you have one. Here is my scoreboard and then you can do two lines or the thickness of your spine or it can be approximate. It doesn't have to be perfect. So my spine is about this thick, let's say, or that thick. How thick is my spine? It really depends on how many papers you have in there. You can see I did those. I think that's really thicker than my spine. We'll soon find out. Okay, you can see here, I created a little spine that's about a quarter of an inch. You don't have to worry about this too much. I mean, you can use fabric to wrap around. It doesn't have to be uh, perfect. We're not, you know, th this is even a little bit bigger than my spine. It's fine. It's going to do the job. The most important thing is not applying glue directly onto the spine or directly onto this little spine here. That's what I avoid anyway. So first thing I'm going to do is apply glue here and here. And I'll tell you in a moment why I'm not applying glue to the spine. You can see that. And I'll just pop that in there. Line everything up. And since my spine is a bit smaller than this strip of paper, I'm just going to round it. It really, it's fine. You know, it's, just, it's a minor little thing. And that's also another reason why I don't apply glue at the spine. Because it gives me movement. Nothing is stuck on. Oh, I just noticed that this hinge is showing through. Oh, I should have cut that one shorter as well. That's okay because the next step is embellishing. But before we go on to that, I just want to double check. And now also while the glue is still wet, I kind of go in and open each page because sometimes that glue can make things really stiff. So it's better to do it when the glue is still wet. 
and to give it a bit of movement. And then of course we'll do that later as well when the glue is dried too. So you'll notice on this one here, this one has a bit of a hollow spine because I scored the middle and then the lines next to it. There's no need to score the middle. But as the book is being worked in and open and closed, it's nice to have movement in the spine. That's why I didn't apply any glue to the spine. And let me show you this one here. So this one has a perfect little spine there. And when I open it, see that space in the spine, it just makes everything easier to open and close. It's a minor little detail, but makes things a little bit easier. Okay. I mean, how simple was that to create this little uh, tunnel book? But really, when it comes to tunnel books, it's all about the story that you create. It doesn't have to be a story, but you just want to embellish it in a way that gives it life, that brings the 3D element to life, I suppose. And the way that you do that is by gluing things in a way that are going to show through. So let's have a look at this one just as an example. It might help give you some ideas so you can see on the first page only two elements this one and this one on the second page again just a few elements uh, four elements or a few with the flowers here and this couple here and then on the next page only one look at that just one so potentially you can have all of this space to add writings you can write around the circle they'll be really cool if you're using photographs you can write uh, what happened on the day or you know remember when remember that time when we went to so and so but at the embellishing stage we're just trying to make it look nice make things sort of pick out from every page and you can see you don't have to add a whole lot of stuff there's just one there so you see just a few elements and look at this all of these things are peeking through and if you make a really thick book or if you display it on a shelf when it's slightly open you get a real you know depth okay let me show you this one as well just gathering some ideas or, or giving you some ideas this all came out of one book these little die, cut, uh, die cuts I'll show you that in a moment just one cut there just one tiny little star there just one little flower there and I think you get the point one little star there really not much but look how rich it looks it's really rich it's only got one or two things you know on each page and then these birds they're all looking into that uh, you know same point so let's pretend there's like a, a little worm there or something so one bird oh actually this one's got three birds on that page two birds on that page you get the idea one there and one there and it just looks really fun same with this one here lots of little elements and the way that i have done the embellishing i didn't go page by page i did it all with the book closed we'll do that next anyway so you'll see what i mean another option of course is to leave it as it is like this one here i didn't add anything like if you're going to be gifting this as part of a journal for example then the recipient can go ahead and make it their own and add their own embellishments so many different options but let me show you how i do the embellishing stage so as you are making your book and you selected your papers and all of that you might already have an idea of what you want to do uh, when it comes to embellishing you can do anything you can go with the theme such as alice in wonderland that would be really cool with this kind of thing with the tunnel book you can do jane austen you can do steampunk insects you can do photos of family or photographs of you and your partner sort of all around with writing you can do a sewing thing anything really or you can just do random which is what i did here because the main idea of me doing this video is to kind of show you the process of making the book and then you can create your own artwork so i'm just going to show you how i go about embellishing you can do things like you know a little border there i'm kind of i'm not sure what the word is i wouldn't say upset i probably should have gone with a vintage theme because vintage things always look so much better for me anyway but i went with this bright kind of a look so this vintage type of stuff doesn't look good but i just wanted to show you this large piece we have a large opening so you can use large pieces on the front cover whereas when you get to the this tiny little bit here you tend to use smaller pieces all right so i start by layering and kind of looking at where i want things to go 
I'm not gluing anything down at this stage. I'm just playing around. I feel like something large like this could go here. So just popping things down to see how I like them. And I actually create the whole look first this way. And also it's nice to have all sorts of different shapes, you know, little flowers and tags and uh, circles always look good. And also you want to have a little something on each page. Let's get closer. These pieces actually came out of a baby uh, pack for uh, like a baby kind of thing, but I can use it in a non-baby thing. Butterflies, I love butterflies and I love including them in my projects, even though I was actually told off in my last video by one of my subscribers or one of people who watched my video. And she said that she was a little bit upset that I, as well as other crafters, are using butterflies way too much and underrepresenting other insects. But the fact of the matter is, I like butterflies, so I'm going to keep using them. So as you can see, I'm just kind of layering, kind of having a look at what goes where. Yes, but other insects are underrepresented in my project, apparently. All right, here we go. Let's say this is what I want to go with. I've placed all of the elements down. I might come in when everything is glued down. I'm going to add little pieces of bling, like something like this, these little stickers. So that's going to be randomly placed around. But from here, I start either inking the edges, which is I like to ink the edges. So I'm going to do that. Somebody else actually said, why do you always use brown? There's so many other colors and you always use brown for inking the edges. You know, there's always going to be somebody who's not happy with something. I use brown because I like brown. I don't like to use orange to ink the edges. I just don't like it. That's the whole point. Like you do in your projects, you do whatever you like, whatever speaks to your heart. So I'm only working on the very first page. Another thing you want to keep in mind, which is <laughs> I totally forgot here, but I had to wipe it off before you apply glue check kind of where the embellishment goes up to because you don't want to be applying the glue that's um, you know over the opening because it's going to be glued down to the next page so just be mindful of that and also in terms of the brown or what I was just mentioning now why should I have all different colored distressings I have brown I don't need to have purple and blue I never use blue I use what I have and I only really need just one color. So now when I go to apply glue to this piece, I'm not going to apply it up here on these points because they are on the open part. So, okay, so there's the first page done and I'm going to open it and just double check here. See, I have glue seeping. It went right through. I'm gonna clean it up before it dries. Keep that in mind when you're gluing your stuff down. All right, everything moved, but I think I put it back where it was. Okay, next page has three pieces, just the flower, the boy, and this little circle. So I'm going to glue this down first. Okay, now, when you lift this up to apply glue, how do you know exactly where to glue it? That's why I do it one by one. So I just kind of either do it this way, just double check, it's gonna go in there. So I don't need glue on the bottom side. So just applying glue to the top, and I'm gonna pop it down. So always looking at the front, that's pretty good. And now the boy, I just don't need glue here on the side. All right, glue applied. And now I'm gonna maneuver him in place. Excellent, all right, page number one is done. Page number two is done. On page number three, I just have a few little pieces. So I can go ahead and glue this one down first. Now the butterfly only need glue right here down the bottom. I might have to come in and wipe some glue off. So now I'm gonna close this up again and position the butterfly. It's looking pretty good. And now on that third page, I only have this butterfly to go. So just a little bit of glue on that upper wing and now pop it down. Now I can already see, I might as well go and do this one here. I think that's the next page. That's a cutout from some scrapbook paper pop that down and I think I just have one thing left to do which is this circle here a little bit of glue and now where did I have it something like that and that's it all of the pieces are glued down I probably will, will do something on the back page because I just want to show you what I have so far 
three little pieces on that page, two little pieces on that page, and so far nothing over here. So now I'm just going to add a bit of bling all over the place. You know, to be honest, I don't like this banner here, so in with a butterfly I go. My apologies. Okay, here we go. You can see those little bling pieces that I added. I'm not sure if that helped or not, but anyway, it's not a masterpiece in any shape or form, but I hope that you've gotten lots of ideas and you can see it's just little things here and there. I just really wanted to demonstrate how you would go about embellishing a book like this. You can only imagine that if you had a theme in mind, such as Alice in Wonderland or whatever, how much fun this project would be telling a story through its pages. So there it is, a tunnel book. When you look at them like this, they kind of seem like a little bit too much hassle or too much work involved and all these details. I mean, this one took all of 15 minutes, not even. And as you've seen, they're really easy and simple to make, yet they can be so elegant and interactive and full of life. I think this one here is my favorite. You can do any shape as you've seen and I think this one is my favorite because of the color scheme this is the kind of thing I gravitate more towards than this kind of thing but in any case let me know if you've made tunnel books before there are many other variations of making tunnel books you can take an existing book and cut out pages to you know create the tunnel looks it doesn't have to be open like this all of my books are open but you can have a page at the back that doesn't have a cutout so it can be like your back cover oh I forgot to mention when I was showing this one before I said I'm going to show you where it came out from and it came from this book art by Marlene and it's full of fun stuff so all of those images you know sometimes it's much easier to embellish your tunnel books or your journals or anything like that when you have a collection of things that look the same so you can see all of those ones came out of that book and, and it's a unified theme. Whereas this one here, I was pulling out from this pack and that pack and pulling out from all over the place. So that took a little bit more time than this one here. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, I forgot to put the instructions up on screen in case you want to take a screenshot. Here is your chance, or if you want to copy it down. Oh, one more thing. I really don't want to underrepresent other insects. So there's a little bug, and an ant, and another little bug, and another one, and another one. But what about sea life? All right, let's add a fish. But what about other things that are out there, like this fish with a human head? Much better.